So thank you guys for coming out on Wednesday. Uh, super awesome to see you guys here. You guys are probably wondering why, um, why we've invited you to come here. And, um, we, we're just really excited for this next September to uh, uh, be launching a new pilot within each of our gatherings, um, sculpted and um, really created for our students and to really like set the atmosphere for them and really blow up the red carpet for each and every one of our students because we all, we're all here for Jesus, but we're here for Jesus' and students and his kids. So we um, really want to focus on that. So we invite Pastor John to come out.
Our church is multi everything, right? They come from all different backgrounds. So there's so many different stories that come up. Um, back when I was doing youth ministry, people went to church probably two to three times a month. Now, the average person, if they go to church, goes once a month. So you don't get a, a lot of time with them. But so we want to make sure that the time we do have with them, we're very intentional. Mm-hmm. You know, sometimes I look back over my life in ministry and there's things that went really well. But when I look at it, they went well more by almost by chance and, of course, the power of the Holy Spirit. Not so much because um, I was thinking things through to be intentional. And so when you combine, of course, the Holy Spirit with also being intentional, uh, there's power in that. And so that's where, you know, uh, obviously, because you can go either side, it can be extremes. You can just say whatever the Holy Spirit wants. And that's awesome. Believe in the power of the Holy Spirit, without a doubt. But, but then we can just be all, and he expects us to use our brain, too, right? Yeah. And so, mm-hmm. or we can just be all caught up in our systems and our structures and we're not leaning on the Holy Spirit at all. Right. And there's no power in that. But you put the two together. And so the power of the Holy Spirit, what he's doing, being sensitive and leading in the Holy Spirit, with at the same time, us being wise as, um, and using our, using our heads, you know, with the worship of the Lord our God with the heart, soul, mind, and strength. So God, what's the best strategy in reaching young people? You know, so it's, it's spiritual to have strategies and, um, and to put structures in place so that we can reach as many people as possible. And so this last two years here at the church, as Pastor Gann has transitioned into the lead pastor, and we have re-articulated our mission statement, and we have clarified our values, and we've really, it's been amazing the last two years what's going on, as we've gotten every, under Pastor Gann's leadership, gotten everybody going one direction. We were a great church, we've always been, God's done some amazing things here. Some of you have been around for a long time. Um, but the, within the ministries quite often, there was, so things happen here, and some things happen here, and something over here, but now we're far more like together. And we've simplified things, and we're going, and we're running in our lanes. Our lanes are our values, which is powerful. And so one of the things we want to look at um, during this next season, you know, with youth, um, as I told you, those of you that were at the meetings, and I don't remember who it was, it wasn't, it's all a blur, okay? So, um, you know, right now, yeah, we don't have a paid youth pastor, okay? At the right time, we'll bring somebody in. And I'm not rushing that because sometimes a lot of sometimes people get so caught up in trying to fill a role and you bring somebody in and it's a wrong fit. And now you've actually hurt more people. You have somebody move in from somewhere to come in and do that, and now he or she's they you know they've uprooted their family, and that they got that mess, and then if it doesn't work out, they're really not the right fit for this, it doesn't work here. We're just we don't rush things here. We just really need to be prayerful and all of that, what that looks like. The structure that's been built here. By April, um, a couple months prior, with, before you know, when Sarah left, by Sarah, was a structure that was not built on a person anyway. Is it being built on the person of Jesus? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so, by, what I mean by that is that we are a groups based youth ministry. We are not a personality based youth ministry. A lot of youth ministry, including when I used to do it here, um, I did a lot, did a lot of the speaking. Um, four kids sometimes had to put up a community worship because nobody was around. So I played this guitar. I was like, I was a one person show. Uh, not saying that that was good, okay? But um, what happens sometimes, not always intentionally, but sometimes what can happen is you get a youth ministry that replaces church in that, and where it gets built around, among a, a youth, a, around the youth pastor's personality. Mm-hmm. And then if that youth pastor leaves and hasn't really built it around something else, you can see that people follow him or her, wherever they go, or, um, you know, there's just, just like, oh, what do you do because you don't have this person here anymore? Whereas when you build it with a group based culture, when you empower leadership, which is who we are, you can have people come in, transition in, or transition out, but the students are really connected through these groups, which is what you all are providing, and they have relationships that even if somebody, you know, like with April, it's just God's calling her to be full time school right now. And that, what a great thing as a single mom to be pursuing getting that college degree and setting that bar for her daughter, and that's awesome. We love that. But it, and it doesn't shake things up because it wasn't built on April. That's handling things, managing things, leading things. Well, you have your hands on it enough that God can use your hands to direct it, but you're not gripping it like this. And when God says, let go, there's like a battle, right? And so we're going to continue to move forward with what's been built. We're not changing anything. Um, it's going to continue to stay group space. Uh, but what we're going to be doing is just really bringing some more clarity as we go into the next steps. Like, what does it look like? What we did the school year? What is it? How do we continue? How do we continue to reach more and more students? And um, what does it look like under a group model to begin to now grow the program? We got some of our our team, of course, is also are also SEU students here with us. SEU of Faith. They go back to school. 
next Wednesday. And so, uh, but with that, they're also, of course, serving in, uh, as part of their degree program. And so, I know Freddie's doing that, and we'll be getting our meetings going. And there'll be some, you don't know this yet, but there'll be some projects and stuff like that. Because they changed the practicum at SCU. Yeah. yeah, they changed it majorly. Um, so, <laughs> but it's going to be fun. So, some projects going. Um, Andrew, same thing, of course. And I've got Andrew right now. Andrew's been serving here for a while, as well as in, in the degree program for a while. So, he's playing point for all of you. The, if you were at the meeting a few weeks ago, you heard me share that. And so, I'm meeting with Andrew. I'll be meeting with both he and Freddie weekly. And uh, then also meeting with Andrew on this point piece. Um, consistently as well. Beth is going to be a part of those meetings also with this event as often as she can. And um, for communication flow, remember that leadership in church is not about climbing the ladder to be at the top. Okay? Um, leadership in God's kingdom, I'm taking a little more time than I can say. Okay. I'm going to go this for a minute. Okay, like in the world, leadership looks like this. This is the leader, and you have all the different layers, and everybody, this is like, you know, the, I don't know. What is this? This is it. The gender? I don't know. Whatever it is. No, whatever that is. It's, it's, uh, it's, and everybody is trying to climb up here, right? Because you think you just want to get to the top. Yeah. And everybody down here serves the person up there. In the world's view of leadership, often. Not all, in every place, but often. In the kingdom view, in the kingdom of God, it looks like this. With the key leader, which here at the church, would be Pastor Dan and Lindsay actually down here. Yes, they are the lead pastors, but they are actually serving everybody else. And if you knew how much time, effort, and everything, and sacrifice that those two put in, then that would be, you would see like, how that works. But it's not about trying to climb up. It's the more you take a leadership role, the more people you're actually serving. So even in asking, in asking um, Andrew to take on this point position, I'm asking him to take on an even deeper serving position to serve all of you. Okay? So in that, we're meeting weekly, and in meeting weekly, really looking at, okay, what are the big pieces that we want to work on in youth ministry, um, and then uh, how do we roll that out, how do we empower people and strengthen people. And so one of the um, things that Andrew uh, has been working on and we've talked about is something that we do want to implement as a pilot. You guys don't know what a pilot is, right? I think a pilot TV show. They pilot it, it's like, oh, they're not quite sure if they're going to keep it or not, right? So they just sort of put it out there. Let's look at the ratings, right? We're not looking at the ratings off of this, but it's like, it's like hey, let's try this and see how this goes. And, you know, and I'll give some context to it, then Lindsay will walk you through what this looks like. Um, it's super, you remember our values? Do you remember the first three values? Anybody remember the first three values of the church? Always learning. It's a good one, but it's not the third one. That's a good one, too. We use that one offering all the time. Jesus-centered, people-focused, a place to belong. <laughs> a place to belong. And so, you know, um, we really want our young people, when they come here from the very first time, they, when they first come on this property, we want everybody, everybody encountering Jesus. It doesn't happen just when the music starts in the worship center or in the youth center. From the very time the tires hit our parking lot, we come to Jesus like how our parking lot team greets, how the people at the doors are greeting, like the whole encounter should be Jesus. It's about Jesus, right? And then as a Jesus Center for people focused, what does it look like for us if we're serving to be focused on the youth that are here um, that are coming on campus? What does that actually look like to actually care for them? And where it's a place to belong. Where a young person comes onto this campus and they feel like, oh my gosh, these are my people. I belong here. And so sometimes what can happen, and I have to guard against this all the time during the week. When I come in on a weekend, there are various people that I know and staff, you know, that I'm not I hang out with all week when I work here. Um, it's easy for me to get caught up in conversations with those people. And but the thing is, is if I'm just in a conversation, you know, with how you know party pastor is, right? Because I'm a party pastor, I think Pastor Alice, right? <laughs> so with party pastor or with um, Lisa or with Whitney or with you know uh, Marina or whoever. So Lena, we can just form our own little group and then put what the heck? All these people are coming. And we get to see each other all week, right? Or on Sunday we get ready to say, wait a minute, y'all see you during the week. I want to look and see how can I make this a place to belong and really receive others in. 
And so we really want to take a look at that. So I have to make sure that it's easy for me to get caught up in conversations I'm already with people that I'm already comfortable with. It takes me out of my comfort zone to actually look and even to talk to 12 year olds or 13 year olds or 15 year olds and do these other things. But it's so important because they need to know this is a place for them to belong. And if we're not intentional with it, people will slip through the cracks. Okay. So that's a little bit of the background behind what we're looking at doing here. And so um, Andrew's been we're working on this. I said, hey, I think this is great. And so he's going to walk you through this, and uh, we're going to pilot this off. Cool. All right. Thank cool. you, Pastor. You gotcha. um, so Katie's passing out papers of, of, of the different roles that we're going to have with Faith Youth now. Um, it's, I'm super excited. Like these students come here, and you know, um, some of them are dragged here by their parents, or um, some of them really want to really want to come. And I think it's because of the community that they're involved with. And, um, we have like social media pulling their attention, we have school pulling their attention, we have like their sports teams or whatever it is like clawing for their attention. Um, so I wanted to, we wanted to put something together that really is that leading, <coughs> leading influence in their lives and showing and encourage them that having a relationship with Jesus is, is priority and, yeah. and, and just to be there to help them do that and to answer any questions. You guys are doing phenomenal. Each one of you, I'm listening on the groups, like at each gathering, and you guys are awesome. Like Rachel's having meetings with students on the side, and just really pouring into them, praying. And I know we prayed for a student this week that was uh, uh, going to look at uh, these blocks or something. And it was just these relationships that we're building are going to last a lifetime. And with that, I really wanted to really like aim at doing that. As, as much as possible with as many students as we have. So we're just going to go down through this faith youth, youth, youth leader roles. And um, so I know in each gathering we don't have a lot of leaders or um, we may have less than other gatherings. So um, we're going to walk through this and identify the certain roles that are, um, I guess we would say, mandatory for each gathering. So the first one would be the check-in table. Julia is usually working the check-in table for 10, 15, and she does awesome. Um, if you've noticed lately, we have like a parent sign-in sheet. So like parents will bring their students here for the first time, and they're like, uh, so what do you guys, do you guys have home groups? Do you have camps? Do you have, like, what, what do you guys do when you guys meet? We have an email that's for parents that goes out once a month that outlines all the upcoming events and like, um, if we're launching student leadership, if we're having home groups in Baldwin Park or La Puente or West Covina, and how they can keep their student connected. So um, the check-in person is really the key role in that. So I'm just going to read it so, so you guys can uh, understand it. Um, this role is a key role in getting families more involved, whether it's welcoming new students or answering any of the parents' questions. This leader is called to engage each student and parent to show them that this is a place to belong. This role will also invite the parents to join the Faith Youth email list, where we notify parents about upcoming events, announcements, small groups, lessons, etc. The more we get the families connected, the more they understand that we are on the same team as them. You will also be the point person for the first time guest team. And you'll also hang back to meet parents as students leave and help check in until the next team is done with their help. So you know, after we finish our small groups and um, the next team is coming coming in to get, like for instance, let's say that 8.30 gathering just, just ended and the 10.15 is coming in. Um, the check-in person would, would uh, um, pretty much watch the, 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 the check-in table just until the, um, the 10.15 huddle gets out. Does that make sense? Yeah. And uh, they would also be like the point person, like, oh, a first-time student comes in and Freddie's on the first-time student team. The check-in person would be like, okay, hi, nice to meet you, talking with the parents. Meanwhile, calling over Freddie, hey Freddie, he's part of the he's a part of the youth, he serves with this grade, and and you would like hang out with the first time student. So um, and now if you see at the bottom it says like 8 30, 10, 15, and um, there's a check-in person for each gathering. That's all that, that means. And then the leaders we need one or two people to be a check-in person. So um, the coaches would Talk to you about that later, and then we have. Have you guys ever heard Pastor uh, Pastor James say the sign is 
is not the thing, the sense of the thing that points to the thing. So um, I kind of got that idea of like having, you know how we have the Bedell entrance over on the other side? And like students probably come in there like crazy and they don't even know that the youth center is here. Like they're not looking at the signs, but if we had a person over there with a sign saying, hey, are you in high school or are you in youth? Um, just out there, like having Mel out there waving it and like <laughs> going up to the students like, hey. <laughs> Did you know that we have a youth uh, gathering as well? No, I didn't know that. Well, follow me. And don't be afraid to like, say follow me because if we get at least one student, that's a student that we wouldn't have gotten. So don't be afraid to say, hey, just follow me. Mm -hmm. So we'll have a, 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 like the gathering has enough leaders, so we'll have a, a person up at the, the hill of entrance and then right here at the cafe too. I know the youth center is right there, but you know students sometimes are like, no, I'm just going to stay with my mom. Like they had that extra push and that extra pull. Like, hey, just follow me. They're going to come. And then when we have everything set up, it's going to be the first time guests. We're going to get to meet the parents. We're going to be with Freddie hanging out. And then it's just going to, like, I'm so excited for this. Sure. Um, one thing I've noticed is that when parents come, it's, it's specifically high school lately, but um, I've noticed like parents will bring their, their students for the first time. What I strategically usually do is I'm like, well, let me introduce you to your small group leader and you can hang out with for a second and if this is something you're not interested, I always go back with your parents and nine times out of ten, the student will stay. Yeah. So awesome. I mean that's like something you guys can do. Yeah, they just need that extra push. Yeah. yeah, it's awesome for Um also we'll have a, a it's not the sign, it's a thing that the sign for you know how to do so it's not <laughs>
<laughs> students need leaders and role models like you in their lives. Amigo team, team hangs with the students before worships, before worship, plays games, and makes their experience unforgettable. So like you're hanging out at the food ball table, you're like, I'm gonna teach you, you know, you're just having fun with it. The students are like, that's what I do. I'm like, oh, yeah. You're playing hockey with them, you're just mingling. Um, so remember they're they're watching our every move. I know when I was in youth, I was like watching my like, what is he doing? Okay, I know that's okay. So yeah. <laughs> So as leaders, we are called to live above the code for approach. So set the standard high for yourselves and be the leader you wish you had at that age. Meet them at that level and fight through the awkwardness. How like there's students we were like talking to a wall. Hey, yeah. how are you? Oh, yeah. 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 Hey, what would you do for fun this summer? I So like when we get in small groups now we like 
move the chair to go around and then, like move the things around. So like you would reset the chairs, um, um, to pick up any trash, any water bottles that are left around, bean bags that are like up on the ceiling. <laughs> Um, this thing reorganizes the room for the next gathering to come in ready to receive students. So like you're preparing the room for the next gathering. So it's like no one ever, no one has that even been in here like this is a our gathering. So it's like just preparing it from like the 8.30 to the 10.15 or 10.15 to the noon. Um, let's see. Um, if you're a part of the the new gathering, you will reset the room the same way, but we'll close up the youth center as well. And I'll be there to help you guys as well. Um, Closing up the youth center means ping pong tables back in the closet. Do you guys know where that is? Like that little, you know, the little Tupperware that's in the, the oh, yeah. small room? Oh, yeah. So like the paddles and the ping pong balls would go in there. Just so where they don't get damaged, like they're left out and someone steps on them. I thought you meant the, the actual table. Yeah, <laughs> Chairs reorganized, pool table covers back on because the last thing we want is like to be missing all the eight ball and it's like no one can ever win that pool. <laughs> yeah. Um, air hockey turned off and then be back in the right spot. And all this preserves our toys for our students, you know, so it lasts a long time. Mm -hmm. um, so that one would look a little bit different for the new as opposed to like, um, like you just have to. Yeah, 10 15. 8 30 will also look a little different as well. They have to say, you know. Um, cut off man. This one's cool. So, Brandon inspired this one for me. Um, <laughs> you know, like when we're, when, okay, we have Julia at the check in table, and then we're all doing worship, and we're like, oh, there's that big empty space. And then, yeah, there's that big empty space in the middle, right? And the students, maybe it's a first time student. They're walking in, they're like, oh my gosh, this is weird. <laughs> so, right? They just check in, Julie's talking to the parents, like, oh, this is our parent email, this is how we get connected when we launch home groups, when we launch student leadership, and she's pretty much telling the vision behind the church and how we just want to share the passion and love of Jesus with them, right? So then the students are like, like, later, Jimmy, and you can like, what do I do? But then you see Brandon like, worshiping, you ever see him like turn around, he's like, yeah. the pool table, and, yeah. and like the worship, yeah. and and uh, the check-in center, mm -hmm. he's like, come on, come on. Mm -hmm. And this one's like high fives and fist bumps. You're like, come on, high five. Come over here, walk over here to worship. It's okay, you're gonna be fine. So that's the cutoff. Mm -hmm. Now, quick question. Uh, for our new gathering, um, we have some students that are ushers as I think that adult leaders for now, but in the future we're going to empower our student leaders to do certain things like that. Um, but for, but for now. we'll talk after. Um, we're not opposed to that. We'll talk after. It's not a bad idea. And then the hangback. Um, Freddie's usually the hangback for 1015. So this this person, if this leader hangs back in the youth center after the 1015 gathering to catch high school students that show up to the youth center at noon. They walk them over to the main worship center to sit with the students in the youth section of the worship center. And you're free to walk over once worship begins in the youth center. Um, some high school students don't know that we have small groups for, or that we don't have small groups for noon, at noon, or that we have a high school section in the main worship. Has, has anybody been in the new worship center in the main? Yeah. It's pocket. <laughs> There's so much energy in that front section where youth and young adults like. We have our own little community in there, and um, I think that because we don't have high school at noon, I think um, they see youth and they assume that there is, so they just go. Um, but if we have that point person for the 10:15, hang back and catch those students and say, "Hey, did, did you know that we have a section to sit in in the in the main?" and then walk them over. And that's just more people that we're catching to get involved in community. And communities were like. Where it sticks and what they need, right? So that's the hang back person, and that's all the roles that we have. So if you notice on on some of the roles, there's like an asterisk. Um, so for the 830, for instance, we have I think it's eight leaders right now that I'm believing that God's gonna move and we're gonna start growing and the health of our youth ministry is gonna 
really be touched by God. So um, we're not going to be able to fill every goal in the 8:30 or even possibly the noon. Um, so there's asterisks next to the ones that yes. that are must, right? So like we must have a check-in person that's there to inform them about what we got going on. Um, offering prep, of course, we have to have somebody prepare offering. And then the mingle team, at least like one or two, you know, hanging out with students, catching up, saying, recognizing showing them that they exist because it may be the only place for them to um, get attention. And then, of course, we have an offering person, setup team. That could be something like, say, you're part of the um, part of the mingle team or something. You can also do the setup team because it doesn't conflict. Um, reset team, and then the hang back guy is only needed for 10, 15, so. Just one person. Um, let's see. Uh, a couple other things. So, also be careful not to assign roles that conflict with each other. Um, you can't be a part of. We talked about this a little. We can't be a part of the mingle team while also the first timer team um, or a sign holder and a check-in team. And then the hang up, hang back man can't be a check-in person as well because um, the check-in person has other duties that they have to do. Main focus is to catch the students that, that don't know that we have a section in the new main worship center. And then, oh, if for some reason you're going to be out, it's important to ask the leader from another gathering to cover for you. Because of, am I confusing you guys? So let's say if you're the check-in person and you're not going to be there, you know, hey, Freddie, can you cover the check? Can you cover for me this week? The main purpose is to keep small groups small. Because in small groups, this is where the students, um, it's like the breakthrough happens. And we don't want to have a big small group in this small group. So, <laughs> so it's important to say, hey, um, uh, you're working, the, you're the 830. Hey, Amherst, I know you're the 1015. Um, would you mind covering for me um, for the eight for the 830? <laughs> 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 And, and then also you're not pulling like, somebody from the first time team to come and cover your check-in role and like then there's no first time guest team. So we're all learning, I'm still learning, this is a pilot, we're all going to be communicating with each other and um, I think it's cool that we start having our hangouts all together. That way we get to know each other, you know, because like the new, somebody from the new team probably never seen or met somebody from the 830 team and just to call them and be like, hey, I don't know you, but can you cover for me? <laughs> the more we develop those relationships, the easier and the more we can be there for each other. Mm -hmm. um, uh, we want to make sure we are keeping the small group small, not combining. Also, we want to make sure each leader role is filled. Because if we ask from our own gathering, we're taking a role that the person already assigned. And then, cool. So, how this will be communicated. So, you're like, Andrew, hey, yeah. It sounds awesome, but how are we going to know what we're going to do, right? So you'll receive a monthly sheet in the groupie chat. Is everybody on groupie? So you'll receive like a almost like a like a schedule, I guess, or like an Excel sheet of the entire month, and it's going to say actually is the check-in. Um, Julia is a sign. You're not just a sign. <laughs> mm -hmm. so Freddie's the hang that guy. Mandy's a the offering, so we'll have it listed there in the group meet. And um, yeah, I'm excited. So it's going to be a month in advance for each month. And again, if you're going to be out, um, try to get the coverage. Um, if, if not, um, we'll work something out with our budget. Or, uh, we can help you out with that. So the future. This is like, this is the future. Um, when we relaunch student leadership, we will empower them to take on the leader work with us. So what we're doing right now when we relaunch student leadership, we're going to be, we're leading by example right now. So like we're going to be able, when we have this launch of student leadership for KPI and um, high school, we're going to be able to say, hey, um, uh, little Johnny wants to learn how to be a first time guest leader. Can you show them, Freddie? And you're going to be right there. And we're going to develop them, starting within the ministry, to set the community that way as well. Um, 
This will help them live out their potential as they grow and mature, giving them more confidence and skills to lead in their group, school, and family. Parents slash guardians will see the impact the word is having on them and will be more likely to team up with us. So a lot of times it's like the parents um, may not know that we're on the same team, right? But we, we want the best for their student. We want to empower them. We want to help them grow. And the more they see the growth at home of their student or in, in their school, the more they're going to be like, oh, let's take them there. And not only that, if we have this community where we're recognizing each student and making them feel welcome and like they belong, they're going to want to come too. And the more that they want to come, the more they want to be involved. And the more they're involved, the more they'll grow in student leadership. The more their parents will want to bring them, the more they'll want to go to home groups in the area. And throughout the week, they're connecting and getting encouraged to know Jesus on a whole other level. Yes, sir. One example um, that's come to mind is Athena. Um, Crystal knows as well. I think some of us also know. And her dad is Edgar. Edgar serves as an usher at her Miss Mini at the Young Service. And um, Edgar told me, he said, hey, Athena had all these problems and everything before she started coming and serving you. She started with her best friend Summer, me and Crystal as well, right? Um, <laughs> serving as a, a student usher. And, but, you know, once she started getting plugged in and started serving everything, um, Edgar came to, came to us and said, wow, you know, I've just seen this, this turnaround in the, at home, you know, and it's just like a, a whole different, uh, it's an improvement that I've seen her because she's plugged into the church and being involved. Um, so what you just said right there is real, yeah. you know, and, and we've seen it in our schools. Yeah, it's awesome. And, and something that kind of go along with that, there's a high school student that probably is and um, I asked him when he got the opportunity to step up in the group by himself. Um, he, it was, I asked him, so how did your, what did your mom say? And when, uh, what was your mom's reaction when she found out you're in the group? She was like, my mom's kind of taken back by it just a little bit because um, that's something she didn't expect that opportunity to be there. So we're looking to launch this September, starting September, we have a couple weeks, to so just get a feel of it, you know, with the coaches, some, some of the coaches, get on the same page, build the structure, and um, just go for it, you know. We trust in Jesus is in this, he's gonna, he's gonna make things happen the way he wants to happen, but we're gonna be able to do the best we can to, to make that happen. You know, just say that, you know, <coughs> with all of this, these are, it's like being on a team, which are, you're on a team, right? And so if you played sports growing up, you know that when everyone's in their positions, everything flows really well. Yeah. You've got to be ready to cover for one another, you know, that stuff as well. But everybody playing their role, it's awesome. Yeah. Um, so it's exciting. And it's a pilot. Yeah. Yeah. You, know, you might have ideas. You might think, hey, what about this role? And then one of the things I was just thinking right now that I didn't catch when we were talking through it earlier, too, was... Do we have these signs already printed? Do you guys already yeah, have signs? I think we, we, have, we should have some. Okay. All right. I'm like, oh, wait. Are they ready? <laughs> 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 That's why it's a pilot, right? We're already ready to send it somewhere. So. Right. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> this is how our liner and like you and me. We'll make it action. <laughs> like, have fun with it. Yeah. Have fun with it. Yeah. You guys are going to portals, yeah? Uh, no. We are. We oh, are. Sorry. Are you going to drive us? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Serve 